Right. All right, folks, as we say at the top of the show, three days left, three big stories. The other two, Superstorm Sandy, which devastated the Northeast with nearly 100 deaths, millions without power, and billions of dollars in damages. Our prayers go out to the victims, their families, and the folks trying to help them recover. President Barack Obama had a politically powerful commander-in-chief moment. His love fest with New Jersey governor and top Romney surrogate Chris Christie didn't hurt either. And, of course, the third story, Mitt Romney, fighting desperately to win Ohio, releases radio and television ads on the auto bailout that are declared false and misleading by GM and Chrysler, as well as the fact checkers. Will they work, or was this one lie too many? Joining me today in the roundtable are The Washington Post, Michael Fletcher, no pocket square, goodness. Republican strategist Lena McAllister, same thing. Dr. Chris Metzl of Georgetown University, oh, he stepped up his game. And the Black <laughs> Eagles, Joe Madison, all welcome to Washington Watch. Joe, Chris said he was at Union Station. The brother said, you the brother Roland always talking about. Yes, sir. That's what he said. That's what made him go get some new, new oh, outfits. Went so, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had to step his game up. That's, uh, at least you contributed to the economy. I did. <laughs> all, right. all right. I had mostly women last week. Now I got all brothers this week. So uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, three days left in this campaign. Uh, it has been back and forth for quite some time. Uh, the Romney campaign has been trying to present this whole notion that the momentum has been at their back. Uh, I disagree with that. I think you look at the polling data. I think you look at this week with Hurricane Sandy. I believe the president goes into the final three days with more momentum uh, with him as opposed to Mitt Romney. Agree, disagree? I would agree with that narrative. I mean, a week ago, I may have challenged that, but I think Hurricane Sandy kind of presented the president in the best light. You see him and Chris Christie working together, working on a problem, kind of the very picture of bipartisanship. And I think that's the kind of thing that's at the core of the president's kind of political identity, and that's been on center stage Speaking this week. Speaking of New Jersey governor, check this out. He was very effusive with his praise of the president this week. I spoke to the president three times yesterday. Uh, he called me for the last time at midnight last night asking what he could do. I said if he could expedite designating New Jersey as a major disaster. The president was great last night. He said he would get it done. At 2 a.m. I got a call from FEMA to answer a couple of final questions, and then he signed the declaration this morning. So I have to give the president great credit. He's been on the phone with me three times in the last 24 hours. He has been very attentive, and anything that I've asked for, he's gotten to me. So uh, I thank the president publicly for that. He has done, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Concerned, a great job for New Jersey. Now, our panel, I want you to re respond to this, but Chris Christie had to put Fox News in check when it came to Mitt Romney. Is there any possibility that uh, Governor Romney may go to New Jersey to tour some of the damage with you? I have no idea, nor am I the least bit concerned or interested. Right. I've got a job to do here in New Jersey that's much bigger than presidential politics, and I could care less about any of that stuff. I have a job to do. I've got 2.4 million people out of power. Um, I've got devastation on the shore. I've got floods in the northern part of my state. If you think right now I give a damn about presidential politics, then you don't know me. Ooh, gut punch from Governor Chris Christie to Fox News there. Uh, to me, this was a case where the governor, making it clear, I had to look out for my constituents as opposed to playing the game. He was just questioning the president's leadership a couple of weeks ago. I think his tune changed this week. It definitely did change. And, it, and what Fox News was trying to do is give Mitt Romney an opportunity to look as presidential as the president. One problem. Only one person can be in that office at one time. And Chris Christie, his concern is his constituents, right? He's looking at death and destruction straight in the face. He is not in the studios of Fox News where he can continue to play the political game. He has to look at his constituents and say, you are suffering, you are crying real tears. How do we get things going? And it gave him an opportunity to say, listen, I'm more worried about leadership than I am worried about presidential politics. Now, interestingly enough, that will help him in 2016 if he ever wants to run <laughs> versus trying to help Mitt Romney right now in 2012. Chris and Joe, this, the, Sa Sandy, frankly, took Romney and Ryan off the stage for at least four days. And when you're inside of a week of a campaign, that is a critical period to make the final sale to voters. It is. And uh, the pathetic, in my view, attempt by the campaign to, uh, by the Romney campaign, to try to get back on the stage by hosting this uh, so-called relief, relief effort in Ohio, effort in Ohio. to get canned goods, which, which, which the Red Cross makes clear we don't need, we prefer money. Yeah, and, and, and then when you say, I know about 
how to do these things because I cleaned up after a football game. I mean, come on. You know, th that's not very helpful. I, Lenny's absolutely right. What we've got here is we have one president at a time. We have Chris Christie saying, okay, this is what it's like to govern and lead. And that's the issue here. So we need to stop all of this nonsense. That, that, that attempt was absolutely pathetic on the Romney campaign's standpoint. If they think that's going to help them, it's not. You guys haven't left me anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> and that's too conservative, Joe. That's what I'm, I mean, I'm sitting here amazed, but, but I, I will make a point because we talked about this earlier during the week. I, I thought the same thing. If I'm governor of a state, a former governor of a state, Lord knows I've had a disaster or two, you know, during yeah. the four years. Well, they did. They had some floods, and we, uh, we uh, found out about a flood in a small, middle-class, blue-collar town where the mayor said they couldn't even get uh, then-Governor Romney to return the call. They could, they, as far as they could get was, a, a, a sec, the, I guess, the head of the staff of the lieutenant governor, and that was it. And, and the town floods every year, and Romney wouldn't talk. I think you're absolutely right. And look, the reality is, and we've said this before, President Obama's got to be one of the luckiest politicians, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, in the 20th century. Right. Uh, and, and, but, but at the same time, I will say this. It's also how you handle it. You mm -hmm. know, remember, George Bush, during Katrina, had an opportunity to step up, and we still talk about the flyover that he, that he did. So the reality is that President Obama stepped up to the plate and did what he had to do. And I have an entirely new set of respect for uh, Chris Christie. We saw the jobs report come out on Friday. Uh, clearly, both campaigns were scared to death. One was probably scared to death, what the report said. Well, actually, I'm going to say both, because if you're the Romney campaign, the last thing you want to see unemployment go down, uh, I'm quite sure. And then, of course, the Obama campaign didn't want to see it go to 8%. What effect will it have for those late folks who have yet to decide who are trying to flip a coin and say Romney or Obama? Not as much considering Hurricane Superstorm Sandy because President Obama has looked presidential in the midst of a crisis that is a multi-state crisis. And so even though these numbers came out, unless if they were going to be so catastrophic... So you think Sandy supersedes the absolutely, jobs Absolutely. Unless okay. if these numbers would have been okay. catastrophically high, if it would have gone from um, 7, 8 to, let's say, 8, 2, then we start talking about, hey, this is not getting any better. People are jumping in, can't find work, and they go from there. The minutia of the details as to what's good, what's not good, gets behind the story of Sandy when people still don't have power and still don't have resources. But, but I would still argue that this is a really good report for President Obama. Think How back, so? Think back a month ago when unemployment went from 8.1 to 7.8, and there were these allegations that BLS had somehow cooked the books and that the unemployment rate really isn't that low. It maintained itself. It went from 7.8 to 7.9 percent. More people coming into the workforce. But the key was 171,000 jobs. Right. And also, Mike, talk about, uh, and Secretary Solis already did, though, the reforecasting of August and September upward. One month went from 142 to 192. Right. That's, that's, that's pretty good that's number. That's pretty good. I mean, particularly in, in this new kind of economic environment mm -hmm. we have, you know, people talk about, yeah. you know, wanting to have a quarter million jobs a month, which would be great. I mean, considering and, when the president and, took and office, the we're losing 800,000. And plus. look at the categories. Mm -hmm. uh, you had increase in health care. Yeah. Uh, and there's a cornerstone of the Obama in, uh, administration, the automotive industry. Yeah, construction you, is construction up, which is, which is, is significant is because up. it's been so different. So, so, you know, this, and, and I think the minutiae is what you're talking about. This little one tick is, and you don't, look, we only have, what, Sunday, Monday, for all practical purposes, to even talk about this. It's not going to be able to register yeah. as much if we had a whole week to discuss But I think it. the significance is it doesn't contradict the president's narrative, you know, about the that's, economy. That's we also saw this week's consumer confidence oh, also oh, at yeah. its highest level since he came into office. Yeah, exactly. That's Four also major. High, exactly. major. Well, well, about 30 seconds before we go to break. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, from, from a, as a social scientist, what I've got to say is that you have to look at trends. And if we look at the trend line relative to the jobs report, we can discuss whether it's bad one month, what, if it's good the other month or not. The trend is that it is consistently getting better. So we have to look at the trends. And, the, you know, those are the numbers. The numbers aren't lying. The trend is upward. That's I'm, the reality. I'm about the trend to a commercial break. So. <laughs>